five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast in partnership with Kidney Care UK, sharing faith, knowledge, hope, and love. Hi, and welcome to Diary of a Kidney Warrior. My name is Dee Moore, and I am a stage four kidney warrior. This podcast is dedicated to encourage, educate, and inspire as we explore all aspects of kidney disease, related chronic illnesses, and health. If you have any questions or ideas for topics you would like me to cover, please get in contact with me on social media using the handle Diary of a Kidney Warrior. Today's episode is part two of the Love, Relationships and CKD series. And my guest today from Cannock, England is Rob Saradsky. Rob joins me to discuss dating and CKD. Hi, and welcome back to Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast. How are you doing today, Rob? Yeah, all good here, I think. Good, good. It's wonderful to have you back on Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast. Listeners, Rob shared his Kidney Warrior story in episode 78. So if you haven't yet heard Rob's story, please do check it out. Now we're continuing with the Love, Relationships and CKD series. Part one was with Megan and Andrew who shared their story and now Rob is joining me for part two and this is going to be an interview in two parts. Part one of this interview we will be discussing dating and CKD and in part two we'll be talking about Rob's Facebook group called CKD Dating UK. So I'm going to start with my questions and what I want to cover in this episode and this interview is the highs, the lows, the everything really related to looking for love and dating when you're living with CKD. So what would be the challenges, highs, the lows that you face as a person with CKD? and you're dating, and you're looking for love? Well, I think from my side, certainly, and the group side, the problem with CKD is that you tend to have other associated illnesses with CKD. So it's not just a case about having a health issue and trying to explain that to others. With CKD, there's a lot of associated issues with it, whether that being diabetes, difficulty with mobility, chest issues. It covers the whole range. It's not just kidney related. So CKD can come with a number of different other issues. So I guess for me, when do you explain that to somebody who you want to date or you have an intention of dating? Do you wait till you've started dating maybe a few months before you physically tell them the situation with your health? Do you risk telling them before you have the first date? and maybe risk not getting that first date? Or do you just slowly introduce it as you start dating? So that, for me, is the difficult bit, whether when and how you tell that person that you have CKD issues. Now, for some people with CKD, it's not obvious that you have problems. So in that case, you could maybe sort of hide it for a while. I don't know if that's the right right way of putting it, but for some people with CKD, especially as they reach low figures with their GFR, it can become quite obvious. So I think that's the issue is at what stage do you tell your partner to be your issues? So from your experience, what would you say is the best? Is it best to be up front and say it ahead? Or would you say it's better to wait a little? What I tend to do is mention that I have health issues. I think that's the way I try and play it. So I say, yeah, I've got a few health issues, but so do a lot of people when you reach almost 50. So I leave it like that. And if they ask, then I do say I've got kidney problems. And then if they want to know more, I'm completely truthful with them. So I don't come out categorically and say, oh, by the way, I've got CKD and I can't do this and I can't do that. I just mentioned that I have health issues and if they ask further questions, then I tell the truth and and explain to them what that might mean. So 
I guess it is a difficult situation of not knowing how the person will respond to such news, but then it could be said that if they respond in a very negative way, then maybe they aren't the person for you anyway, which is probably really easy for anyone on the outside to say, but a stark reality for somebody who is actually living through that situation. Yeah, and I mean, as you get older, as I say, you know, every everybody, and this is everybody, is going to have a health issue, whether that be, you know, just old age, whether it's breathlessness, whether it's CKD, whether it's cancer, whether it's diabetes. At some stage, I would say 99% of the people in the UK will have a health issue. So if that person hasn't experienced health issues or somebody in the family hasn't experienced certainly CKD, then it's difficult for somebody who's completely healthy to understand what might be the issues. How would you help that individual understand the health issues? Well, for me, I just tell the truth. So if they ask direct questions, then I will give them direct answers. I mean, for me, I don't get breathlessness. I've not got fluid overload. So it's slightly different to me to, you know, like everybody has different CKD issues, as I've already explained. So it's difficult without knowing the person. But for me personally, I tell them I have CKD. If they ask direct questions, I give them direct answers. And then I leave it up to them. I always leave an option. So if we're messaging or talking, then I'll say, you know, if you want to arrange a date, then, you know, let me know and we can sort something out. You know, sometimes 50% might not return your call or your message. Those that do, obviously, you can arrange a day and then meet up at some stage. So what other challenges might people face? When you've got CKD, there's a lot of ongoing treatment or certainly a high probability of ongoing treatment. So the first thing is, if you do start dating, the partner would need to know that things are not easy to plan going forward, especially when you reach below 15 GFR and put, well, first of all, on the transplant list and then different procedures, because even though you drop below 15, there's still a lot that urology and the CKD teams can do to try and improve your functionality. So whether that be stents, nephrostomies, whatever procedure they decide. So it's not easy to plan things even a month in advance because you don't know what's going to happen. So I think that's a really important part of the relationship and how that works out is that people can't book a holiday 12 months in advance or sorry, they can, but they have to accept that they need good insurance and there is always a possibility that it can't go ahead. Now, bear in mind when you're below 15 GFR, you put on the transplant list. So anywhere that you go, even if it's for a weekend away, you need to be within two hours of the hospital. You need to have a packed case with all the necessities in. So you can never be too far away from the hospital. And that can affect dating, obviously. You can suspend yourself from the transplant list if you want to go abroad. But again, everything has to be planned. So when you firstly going into a new relationship, you need to be clear about that. So that's one thing. The other thing is when you get a new partner or you start a new relationship, there's always that difficult subject of, being a donor or a transplant donor, I should say. So I've found that sometimes your new partner may assume wrongly, or rightly, I guess, in some cases, that you only want a partner because you want a kidney. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> so again, that's a difficult one because a majority of people just want love and want to move on with their life and be in a loving relationship. But Sometimes there's that nagging feeling for the partner that maybe you could do with their kidney. <laughs> so again, that's quite difficult to broach, even though you explain that it's got to be a perfect match and the likelihood of that kidney being suitable for you is, you know, is probably unlikely. Obviously, you still have to make sure that your partner is reassured, really, I guess, that you're not just with them for a new kidney. Wow, that must be difficult. We're saying it in a lighthearted way now, but actually when you're in that situation and you have feelings for somebody and then they say to you, well, actually, you're just using me because you want my kidney. That must be extremely devastating for somebody, for them to say that to them. Yeah, I mean, nobody's physically come out and said, you're only with me for my kidney. Nobody's (laughs) actually said that. However, 
it is mentioned sometimes, you know, as in a jokey way, sort of, you're not with me because you want my kidney, are you? You know, and yeah. and so you, so you actually know that they're actually thinking along those lines. And, you know, apart from reassuring them and saying, you know, you probably wouldn't be a match anyway. I mean, the thing is as well, it would be great to have that kidney. <laughs> so it's quite <laughs> difficult, really. Not with you for the kidney, but you know what? If you were to offer, I'm not going to say no. Exactly. <laughs> We're talking about love and relationships, so I'm going to ask the question. How do you navigate intimacy? How does having CKD affect intimacy? For me, it doesn't, but I know for a lot of people it does. So as your GFR reaches certainly below 20, 15, it can have a big impact on sex life. For one, you're continually tired or can be continually tired. You can be very irritable. Obviously, with CKD, in effect, your body is being poisoned slowly. So over time, as your GFR drops, your body is becoming more and more toxic, which for a lot of people means that they have to sleep a lot just to act normal for the time that they're awake. So certainly some people can sleep 15, 18 hours a day just to stay alive because their body is so intoxicated with toxins. So it can affect certainly on a, an intimate level. And again, that has to be something that's discussed, I would guess, quite early in, into the relationship because, again, a lot of people, that can certainly sway one way or the other how the relationship goes. But luckily for me, that hasn't happened. But yeah, it's certainly a factor that needs to be discussed early. So you mentioned earlier in terms of the challenges people face when they have multiple appointments as part of their CKD treatment. When it comes to medication, because as we know, all medications come with some kind of side effect. How does that also impact on relationships? Well, again, as you say, all medications can have side effects. So whether that be sleeping more, whether that being an upset tummy, whether that being very irritable. Depending on what medications you're on, they can all have an adverse effect. So that needs to be something that's discussed as well. And and different times, I mean, for a lot of people, they can eat and drink whatever they want. Now, when you have CKD, in some cases, you're on fluid restriction. So you might be only be able to drink, say, a litre a day over 24 hours. So again, it's not just a case of let's go out for a coffee or let's go out for this. Everything has to be monitored. And especially from the medication side, a lot of medications you have to eat with food. So if you're on, for example, one tablet four times a day that has to be eaten at meal times, you have to be so regimented. So you have to have breakfast at, say, 8 o'clock, have a tablet, have lunch at 12 o'clock midday, have your tablet, have dinner at 4 p.m., have your tablet, and then have supper at whatever time 8 p.m. have a tablet so again it's not just a case of let's nip out for food or let's nip out and have a beer or let's nip out and have a coffee because some people are so restricted in the times and the amount that they can eat and drink everything becomes more difficult even from a diet point of view certainly if you have a steak for example that can have an adverse effect on your bloods. So if you're going for bloods the next day and you have a 16 ounce steak the night before, your bloods are going to be low. So then the hospital might ask you either to come back and have another blood test. They might ask you what you've eaten. They may actually panic and think that you've got a problem when really you haven't. So it's just a real balancing act. And having a new partner, certainly if it's a new partner, would need to be explained. And hopefully they understand. I mean, if you've been in a relationship for many years, I guess it becomes part and parcel of the relationship. But certainly for any new relationship, it can cause a bit of friction. So we've talked about the challenges. We've talked about the lows. So let's actually look on the positive side and look at the highs. So I know that you started a group for people with CKD to find love and relationships. And your group is on Facebook. And I know that there's actually been people who have found love through your group. So it has proved to be successful. So will you share with us about the group? Yes, certainly. So I'd come out of a relationship around 2018 and I was thinking there's nothing really for people 
with CKD or any other illness really to be able to date and for those people who have CKD there was an opportunity to help people really. So in October 2018 I set up a Facebook group called CKD Dating UK mainly with hope of getting people together for friendship and for dating really and for love. So I started the group initially and Within a few weeks, I realised that actually this is going to be quite a difficult task. I was still working full time. I was having my daughter quite often, still going to the gym, a little bit of a social life. And I was getting more and more members. And it was quite difficult to keep up because for every member that joins, you have to check they're not married. They have CKD. They live in the UK. Because although I put CKD date in UK as a title, I was getting people from India, America. Australia, all over, trying to join the group. But from my point of view, I wanted it based really in the UK and Ireland so that initially it would be easy to arrange meetups and to arrange things really amongst ourselves. So that was the first difficult task. Luckily, there was a lady who offered her help initially uh, and she joined me as co admin. And shortly after, a lady called Caroline joined. Since then, Me and Caroline did our best for a while. Since then, we've had a few more admin people join, Kate, Michelle and Dave, and they help out quite a lot as well. So it's just a case of monitoring the people who are trying to join and keeping the vulnerable people with CKD safe. So that, for me, is the the primary objective of the admin team. Again, some people with CKD can be quite vulnerable, so we try and keep a tight rein on the people that join. That's really good to know because, like you said, anybody who has a chronic illness can be extremely vulnerable as a result of it. So to know that you've got those safeguards in place and, like you said, checking whether people are actually already in a relationship or not, that they do actually have CKD and they're not trying to deceive people. It's really good to know that you have those safeguards in place. So... For people who would like to join the group, how do they go about joining it? Yeah, so the group's not just for people with CKD. We have opened it up slightly over the last uh, year or so. It is definitely people with CKD, but also carers of people with CKD. So that the main reason behind that is because they will also know the issues that people have with CKD and dating. So we have opened it up for carers as well. So to summarise, all new members must be single. They must have CKD or be a carer. They go to Facebook, type in CKD Dating UK, and hopefully our site will pop up. We have well over 200 members now. It's growing all the time. We ask for people to be in England, Scotland, Wales or Ireland or Republic of Ireland. And the group, although it's only been going for just over four years, we've had several engagements. We've had lots of relationships start up. Unfortunately, we have had a few members who have sadly passed away. We've created a memorial page for those who have joined and then sadly passed away. Their pictures are on that page. We try and arrange regular meetups, although with COVID and that, it's been quite difficult. We've had one in London and one in Edinburgh, where people have met up just for the afternoon for a coffee. And obviously, if they wanted to go out for a beer or whatever later that's also encouraged we also have regular matchmakers we've actually got one at valentine's time so we open up a post where people who are looking for a relationship because there are people who are on the site who are just there looking for friendships rather than dating so for valentine's day we have created um, a little post where people can post their most recent picture we asked for the picture to be from 2023 and unfiltered And then we open it up for people to make comments and at least get people chatting. Caroline's done a great job of arranging matchmakers in the past, and she's actually matched people up from all over. So some people in Scotland are now dating somebody down in Cornwall. It's very, very difficult, well, certainly with COVID and also the distance between. But so far, so good. They seem to be getting on really well and meeting regular, which is a great advert for the Facebook page, really. So, yeah, we welcome everybody, really who's got CKD or a carer to join our group and hopefully find love. So do they have to be over 18? 
Yes. Sorry. Yes. I should have mentioned that. Yes. Certainly over 18. That sounds amazing. It's really wonderful to hear that despite all the challenges that we talked about earlier, that people are meeting each other, making friends, forming new relationships, preparing for marriage. Sounds absolutely wonderful. So based on that now, what advice do you have for somebody who's living with CKD who is looking for love? Well, as we all know, it's quite difficult dating and forming new relationships when you have CKD, along with all the issues that goes with it. So come and join us at our group and hopefully you'll find somebody who's living quite close and maybe you could conjure up some love in 2023. So yes, just to say that name again. So if you go on to Facebook and type in CKD Dating UK, then you'll find Rob and the rest of the members of the group there and then you can fill in the questionnaire yeah there is a short questionnaire it just says are you from the uk or ireland can you confirm you have ckd and agree to the admin rules and we do really ask for a a recent photo because as it is a dating group primarily we do ask for a recent photo there are some people who have said for whatever reason they're going through a traumatic time or whatever And we have to judge those on individual basis. But generally, 95%, we ask for a recent photo just for security purposes as well. Because to have a blank Facebook page really is a bit of a red flag for everybody. Oh, absolutely. You can be anything and anyone online. Exactly. It's really important that it's vetted. So, yes, if you're looking for love and you're in the UK, do check out CKD Dating UK. So, Rob, do you have a final word for the listeners? Well, let's hope we all find love in 2023 for those that haven't already. And come and join us and hopefully you'll find the love of your life. Thank you for listening to Diary of a Kidney Warrior podcast. And don't forget that you can contact me on social media using the handle Diary of a Kidney Warrior. Please do subscribe to the podcast and please do tell a friend. New episodes of this podcast are released every other Monday. Until next time, take care and choose to live. Diary of a Kitty Warrior. Sharing faith, knowledge, hope and love.